In this video, I'm going to talk about how to work with effects in Illustrator. In the previous video, I already mentioned that we can apply them through the appearance panel, but it's also good to know that there is actually a, a separate menu called effect. Now within here, we can see that there's two main categories, Illustrator effects and Photoshop effects. All you have to really remember is while Illustrator effects are fully vector-based, Photoshop effects are always pixel-based. We call them raster effects. There's one important thing to remember about raster effects. So let me just copy this element here down and I'm going to make sure it's grouped together. So I just press Command G or Control G on PC. And then from the effect menu, I'm going to go to Blur, Gaussian Blur. So this is a Photoshop effect, which means it's going to be raster effect. And I'm going to apply a blur on this object, just like that. When I zoom closer, we can have a closer look at it. And after a while, it will become obvious that there are some pixels involved in this effect. Now, the raster effect settings is what's important in these cases. Because although this object is still vector-based, to be able to render this effect, Illustrator needs to rely on pixels. If you go into the effect menu, you can find the document raster effect settings where you can decide how well defined you want these effects to be. The higher the resolution, the more computing power Illustrator will need. So let's see what happens if I set it up all the way to high, which is 300 PPI, and I click OK. Immediately, the blurred details will get really nice and smooth. What I recommend to do is to set it to 72 while you are working, which is the screen standard resolution. And then if you feel like you need to add more definition, you can increase it higher. The document raster effect settings is obviously a global option, so it will apply to the whole document. And if you use a lot of raster effects, you might want to remind yourself before you export your final file to increase the raster effect settings and ensure that you will get a good quality print. It's also important to notice that once you apply an effect on a group or an object, it will be indicated with a field circle next to that element in the layers panel. So empty circle means that you only have fill colors and strokes, but once you have multiple attributes or effects, you will see that the complexity is represented with this field circle. Also, don't forget that whenever you apply effects, they can always be found in the appearance panel. So I can always turn it off or back on, and I can also click on it to amend the amount of blur in this case. Let me show you now a vector-based effect. So I'm going to select this other instance of this little icon. I'm going to group it together as well and go through the effect menu, but this time I'm going to choose Distort Roughen. This is a great effect as well, which you can remember even as an explosion effect, because that's what is going to happen once I turn on preview. You can see that it's going to blow this icon into pieces. And that can be controlled, of course, so the size you can play around with, but you can also increase the detail level. Now, this makes it really interesting. So if I have a low amount of size, but high amount of detail, I can use it to have a little bit more of a fuzzy edge on the design. Now, if we have a look at the layers panel again, we can see the full circle represents that there's something more complex than just the default appearance. And there's the rough and effect there. Although I grouped that circle and the fire together, I can still access parts of the group and I can apply an effect directly to a part of the group, like in this case, that circle. So the circle has that rough and feature on it already. But on top of that, I'm going to add another effect go through the stylize scribble option and I can again change spacing on this maybe and then maybe also reduce curviness a bit something like that 
we can also reduce variation and then I will click OK. So now we have multiple effects and I managed to turn this whole thing more into like a sketch or hand drawing. So my point is feel free to combine effects and apply them to different parts of your design. Here's another example. What if I select this circle? The map is not part of this selection, just the circle in this case. And I'm going to apply a white stroke around it. Now, you might be wondering why do I use a white stroke? Well, it's not visible really because it's on a white background. But once I go into the effect menu and choose stylize drop shadow, it will become visible. Let me just turn on the preview and we can already see it there. Um, I might just reduce the blur a bit, something like that, and also reduce the distance to 1. Once I click OK, we can already see how it looks like. Now, currently, the drop shadow is applied on the whole circle, not just the stroke. So what happens if I drag the drop shadow effect here in the appearance panel and drop it into the stroke attribute? When I do that, you can see what happened is that now the drop shadow is only on the stroke but not on the fill. So the stroke itself is actually casting a shadow on the circle's fill color. So once again, what happened was that I moved the drop shadow and I could do the same and drag it onto the fill color or just drag it all the way down so it's affecting both attributes. And that's another important lesson there to learn that if you want to affect both fill and stroke or all the attributes on an object, make sure you drag the effect all the way at the bottom, which is going to be like a global effect applied to all the attributes. I actually prefer it if it's only on the stroke in this case, so that's where I'm going to move it into. And here's another very important thing that you need to remember. If you want to apply an effect on multiple objects, you have to make sure you group them together first. This is especially important if you want to use 3D effects. So I selected these two items and I press Command or Control G. Now they are a group. And now I can go into Effect, 3D, Extrude and Bevel. This is a brilliant option as well. And uh, once I click on preview, you can see exactly what happens, that now we have a 3D object. And I can turn this around and see it from different angles. When I click OK, I can see how it turned out. And yes, it looks more like a coin. And I can always go back and make changes to how it's positioned in the 3D space. And let's not forget that all the effects that you use in Illustrator can be saved as a graphic style. So I could save this 3D effect, for example, which is now added there. And then I could apply to another group, like this one here on the left. So if I select these and I choose graphic style, we can see how that will work in 3D. It probably looked better without the 3D effect. So I can always undo that last step, but it's just good to know that you can combine effects together and you can always update them using the appearance panel. Of course, we would be able to spend hours and hours about going through all these effects and there's actually no limit of how you can combine them together. So instead of spending time on that, I would like to ask you to experiment with the effects. But there's one last thing that I would like to explain to you, and that is the expand appearance option. So what I'm going to do here is I select this circle, which has this drop shadow effect on it, and I will come to the object menu and show you what expand appearance does. When I click on that, what happens is at the moment, not really obvious because it looks exactly the same as it was. But once I look at the layers, I will find that within this group, now I have an additional group, which is the actual shadow itself and that outline. If I go further into it, I can see actually the stroke and the shadow are two separate objects now. So expand appearance extracts all the necessary elements. So you lose the ability 
to make changes to them so they are not dynamic effects anymore but they can be edited manually which means for example I can select the shadow and just use the arrows on the keyboard to position it differently this is another great technique whenever you want to extend what you can already do with effects and you can see how different immediately it looks it's not the standard shadow that normally you see in designs it looks even more 3d now and because the shadow is a separate object I could even distort it like that so we can call expand appearance a destructive technique because it separates the effect from the object but remember that it opens up new ways to work with the effects and that is all I wanted to explain to you in this chapter but like last time at the end of the chapter I have an additional video where I'm going to give you some tasks to practice what we've learned this time to practice what we learned in these last few videos